Okay then. Today, um, just started doing the first bench tests on the uh, new liquid cool controller or prototype. So this particular baby is uh, comprised of four Parex IGBTs, twin packs. They're 400 amp, uh, 600 volt modules. We're uh, firing their gates from a Parex uh, VLA 500K IGBT uh, um, driver and uh, got the standard control board but we've, we've done a couple of changes to that and I've got my um, E46 BMW Hall Effect pedal sending the throttle signal to the control board and I've got a standard uh, I've got my trusty 12 volt starter hooked up here. So we've also got our uh, RTD Explorer software on here. I uh, just literally started doing some initial testing. So without further ado I'm going to put this thing onto a tripod and we'll see if we can get some uh, shots. Okay now in this case um, we are feeding our starter uh, from a 36 volt uh, battery. I can hopefully see over here, it's got some of these crappy uh, 7 amp hour gel batteries. So, what I'm going to just do is um, check the computer here, which is telling me I've got a heatsink temperature of 17 degrees C. And we can just give our throttle. <laughs> Peak um, motor current there of 430 amps and battery current of just over 100 amps. So I'll try and zoom in on the oscilloscope here. I'm not sure if this is going to work. The old camera isn't exactly the greatest show. There we go. There we go. Now that scope is currently connected across the switch. So it's uh, going across the sea of the IGBTs. So we can uh, turn up the intensity a bit there probably. Turn off that light might make the might make it a little bit more visible. I can actually maintain the speed setting there. That is about 26 motor amps and about 3 battery amps. I'd say the Hall Effect throttle pedal is very, uh, is very controllable. And that's the first temperature change that I've seen on my heatsink. So I'm up to 18 degrees C. So I'm trying to adjust the scope so we can see the bottom end of the... I decided to stop triggering. Very considerate of it. Let's try again. Very inconsiderate. Let's go for it. There we go. So we're getting a little bit of overshoot here. I say undershoot. Nothing crazy. And the mincing machine is what that thing smells like. 18 degrees C. Thus far. I don't know if that's coming out too well on camera, though. 
try and turn off the room light here. Might make it a bit better even. seeing as much of the Miller effect with these drivers as I had been seeing before. I mean, I can see the knee, but it's not as, uh, not as pronounced at all as it had been. I had on this damn thing. smell brush dust out of that starter now so it's uh, beginning to cook itself. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scope so it's on the, uh, the gate in Itter of one of the IGBTs and we'll uh, we'll see what that comes out like. Alright, so we're back now we're across the gate emitter of the number uh, 4 IGBT from the left and uh, I'm beginning to smell bad things coming out of my trusty starter so um, we will be upgrading to a hydraulic pump uh, out of a fork truck. Um, I'm just ordering some hydraulic hoses and parts for that so I can get that set, uh, set up. But for now we're just doing our over voltaging a starter trick. So here we go. As we can see on that hopefully it is a very clean uh, drive signal. to everything I'm seeing on the computer but that being said I'm not seeing any kind of heat generation. Now there's actually a little bit of heat coming into the VLA but even the VLA that's actually turned off is at the same temperature so nothing much happening on that. DC DC is cold big caps are stone cold and um, nothing much on that affair. My starter's getting hot. Explode or something. Okay, so we're out in the um, workshop here, and I've got my 36 volt um, 5 kilowatt um, forklift pump motor set up uh, here to the controller, and uh, I've got three of these crappy gel batteries on here. So we're running at 36 volts and um, let's give her a quick blip of the throttle. Okay, so let's see if we can get a bit of info here.
just realized there I'm not actually graphing the current reference as I change that. There we go. You get rid of the heatsink temperature, we don't need to graph that. So I have to do is have to get some hydraulic components so I can actually uh, put a load on this machine. a dart flying out. And the smell ozone again. It's always a bad sign. It's not a bad little uh, pump motor actually. Tom is in pretty good condition in there, so I think it'll make a good, uh, it'll make a good test rig. It's, it's just a single brush set up there. No, I'm not sure whether it's series or compound. But unlike a lot of pump motors, it's got a fan here on the back, so. Good thing. Uh, see if I can get over the back side of it there. Uh, turn around a bit. Here we go. It's a. Uh, do the camera ro rotation on here. There we go. Schaumbler, I think, is what it is. 36 volts, 176 amps, 5 point something kilowatts. I think it's uh, something like S3 at 30% duty cycle. So, for purposes of doing some controller testing here, I think it'll, I think it'll fit the bill. Um, but so far, this is our controller. Um, it seems to be coming together, they have tapped into the PWM signal there and the 5 volt supply got our DC DC in there uh, terminals at the side and um, so yeah it's got to get more voltage as I say get this guy in a state that I can actually put them under a bit of stress. I kind of suspect that um kind of suspect it's gonna work out. And get some decent um batteries too. Batteries are about to quit. But, uh, after that, yeah. So I'll be uh, hopefully doing some more or testing and some more updates. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs>